This isn't working. Welcome to Blackthorn Tattoo, Ruby's shop here in Portland, Oregon. The last time this space appeared in a video was when we built the 3D printed mini server rack that runs the network and security in here. That was back mid construction with wires dangling and the shop incomplete. Since then, Ruby is back to work, machines are buzzing, and now she's roped me into the next project. This is going to be Ruby's Founders Wall, a space to immortalize the names of folks who've bought tattoo time at a discount in advance to help fund the shop build out. And yes, Ruby is getting her Founders Wall before I get mine. We argue about who came up with the idea of having a founding members thing first. I think it was me. She thinks it was her. Mine's going to end up here when I have it. Ruby mocked up the design and created a overall concept for what we're doing. We decided on colors, we decided on the size of them, and then I needed to know how many. 50. Okay. Do you want more? <laughs> With the concept in hand, the project laid out before us, we're back here in my studio, Mandic Labs 2.0. Proudly brought to you by our studio sponsors, PCBWay, and this video in particular by Prusa Research. We have a relatively short window to work with, so we gotta dive into this. We only have three days between Ruby's tattoo appointments to design our parts, 3D print 50 of them, post-process them, and get them installed in her space. So let's get to work. This design process should be relatively simple. Ruby is not a 3D designer, but she is an artist. She made this mock-up in Adobe Illustrator so we could get the exact size that we wanted on the wall and lay them out to make sure that it was going to work at the scale we wanted. This is an SVG file. That makes my life so much easier when it comes to designing this. Side note, I haven't really said to this point, it is a heart-shaped locket we are designing here. Put the name emblazoned across there. It'll be the love to all of the people who helped support Blackthorn Tattoo. I could take the SVG file that Ruby gave me, pull it into Fusion, and then I could work right off of it. I can extrude right off of it. Now I do find SVGs, even when done really well in Illustrator, they get translated a little weird in Fusion. So I generally find from one side to the other of what should be a symmetrical object won't be. As such, I'm going to design this in halves. I can create one half of it, then I can mirror the body over to create the other half. That way my design will be symmetrical. Overall, this is a really simplistic design. The biggest issue we ran into was how we are gonna hang these. Ruby actually had an excellent idea of hiding a keyhole, keystone type hanging point in the actual clevis lock portion of the locket. I made that area ever so slightly wider so it'll hide the screw head. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill all of these into the wall. 50 Tapcon screws into concrete. This is gonna create a good way to hang them, get them all nice and level, and be able to pull them down when we need to apply names to them as new folks join the Founders Club. The design process went quick, so I was able to run off a prototype and get final approval from Ruby. What do you think? Do you need any changes? Do you have approval? It's absolutely amazing, I love them. With design approval in place, I have it on video, you saw it. I am ready to load up these spools of Prue Cement Lipstick Red ASA onto the Core One print farm and get these printing. We're using ASA in particular for a reason that will make way more sense when we get to post-processing. And the Lipstick Red is just a super vibrant, stark red color that's really going to achieve the look that we're going for. So let's get these loaded up because I've got 49 more of these to print. I'm really adoring the fact that this new print farm is really unlocking the game for me. Projects are growing in scope and they're not feeling more overwhelming as they do. Aside from the fact that this farm can't currently change its own print beds, I did have to still come in at 3am to swap things around. Maybe that's for Mandic Labs 3.0. Final prints are coming down the home stretch of printing. Let's get set up for post processing with acetone. The entire reason I chose ASA as the print material for this project. You see, the entire concept of these hearts is a pop art aesthetic. 
To me, pop art is exemplified by bright, vibrant colors and high contrast, so red against a white wall in our situation. Simplistic designs that really convey what they mean at a glance. So we've got our locket heart here, very simple, very straightforward, and a shiny and plasticky look to things is pretty common. And that's the one thing we're missing here. I have mentioned previously that acetone in conjunction with ABS or ASA materials can actually melt the plastic. Okay, the proper term is dissolve, but the practical effect of it is it can be used as a gluing agent to glue two pieces together, or it can be used to smooth the materials, either via direct application onto it with a brush or a rag, or in our case, vapor smooth it. I ran to my local Lowe's, I picked up this cobalt storage bin that we're gonna use to trap the vapors from the acetone inside of here and create a smoothing chamber. When you brush on acetone to your print with a rag or a brush, it's hard to control the application exactly. So you often get brush strokes or rag marks where you inconsistently applied the acetone. It happens. When you're gluing things, that's fine and kind of necessary. When you're trying to smooth these out and get a pop art look, it's anti what you're trying to do. We could also dunk our hearts into acetone, but that's also difficult to control. Vapor is slower, but it's gonna be a lot easier to manage because it's slower. I ran to my local dollar store and I picked up some basic supplies to build this out. Some cheap cookie sheets for like $1.50 each for our actual tray our hearts will sit on and these little spice racks to elevate things up off the bottom of this vessel. So I'm gonna set these wire racks in here and then I can use them to elevate our pans up off of the bottom so that we're not actually sitting in acetone, we're only having the vapors circulate around the thing that we're trying to smooth. To aid the way this is going to work, I'm going to head over to my only fans drawer and pull out a single fan. This particular fan is a Rosewill seal fan, 140 millimeter IP56 rated, which means dust and splash resistant. So I'm hopeful it won't have any stray sparks coming out of it that could, oh, I don't know, ignite a flammable liquid. Rather than spend a bunch of time making a mount for this fan, as I might want to use the storage container, I'm just double side taping it to the side. To control the fan, I'm just going to use my benchtop power supply, set to 12 volts, and I get some air movement to circulate through the chamber. For any folks interested in the print details on the 49 hearts that I've gotten done, Started at 9 a.m. yesterday, 1 p.m. today, I had 49 of them, so 28 hours of print time. Each print was around 3 hours and 15 minutes and just under 99 grams of filament, meaning I've used just under 5 kilograms of filament to produce these hearts. I have three perimeters on them, 5% adaptive cubic infill, as I just need a decent structure to hang these. After that, they're just going to be dangling on the wall for the rest of their lives. They don't need to be super strong and heavy duty. The Prusa Print Farm absolutely came in clutch on this. A three day project with 50 total prints ahead of me. I never would have tackled this in previous months, years. Now, knowing that I have these reliable machines able to just pump out parts, it really wasn't that daunting the task, aside from having to come in at 3 a.m. to change around prints so I can stay on schedule. Printing, I'm thrilled with the way they turned out and how quickly they got done. To start smoothing, we need to get some acetone into our chamber. It's not gonna take a lot, just enough to start the process of filling up this chamber with vapor. It's not the liquid that's doing the job, it's the gases. Okay. After 15 plus, we're probably closer to 30 minutes now, in the chamber, the first two I'm trying to do really haven't smoothed out yet. And I've got 48 more to do. I could probably leave these in here overnight and they'd probably be great. I don't have time for that. So we're gonna get drastic. So in comes this old Ender 3 mainboard, the original bed heater off my Ender 5 Plus, and a little bit of hacky wiring to get it all together. I ended up having to throw a dummy hot end on here because it needs that input to make this thing think it's an Ender 3 with Marlin firmware on it, so I have thermal runaway protection and the ability to set the bed heater to function as a chamber heater to heat up the acetone and help the vapor smoothing process. 
actively heating underneath this container really started to evaporate the acetone faster, creating more vapor flowing around inside of the chamber. Definitely getting me some nice shiny results. What I was looking for, but this isn't working. After an embarrassing number of hours, I've got two fully smoothed, two halfway there, <laughs> and way too many still to go. I need to approach this from a different direction. I ran to the store and I grabbed some of these cheap aluminum baking trays. I need to reduce the volume of space that fills with acetone vapor so these smooth much faster. And I also have to continue with the active heating meaning I'm gonna have to slap these onto the print bed of my Prusa XL and whatever else I can. The smaller chambers fill up with vapor faster, but they were hard to control, so I did continue using the bigger chamber just with more hearts in it. In the end, I didn't get as many of these smoothed as I would like, it's just taking too long. We need to get this project done. So it's time to get the names cut. We'll talk more about the smoothing later. Ruby picked out this pastel purple acrylic and then designed up script names for the individual supporters so we can laser cut these out with the CO2 laser and then manually locate them onto each of these hearts. Setting up some type of locating system just didn't make sense with 50 names. A little CA glue and careful alignment is what we're going with. Install time begins with the laser level and one of my favorite tools, masking tape. I need to lay out a 10 column and 10 row grid because Ruby wants an offset pattern for these hearts. Drilling this, I've been drilling a lot of concrete lately, so I picked up this cordless hammer drill and it's so much nicer than my corded one until I broke the only bit I had and had to start again the next day. When installing Tapcons, lately I've been putting a little dab of silicone on them. This helps to lubricate the threads for easier install and glue them in place a little bit to hold them just a little firmer in slightly loose holes. Now I have a wall that looks like it has really bad blackheads. But we can get on to installing our hearts, which is really just as simple as hanging them and maybe slightly adjusting the depth of each. some screws depending on whatever surface texture is on this concrete wall. Fifty hearts. Fifty of them, which means fifty screws, fifty holes drilled into concrete. It's actually more than fifty screws, a couple of them broke, and it's actually more than fifty holes because a couple of them, it's old concrete, got weird, at least one of them chipped out real bad. I had to move it over like a three eighths of an inch. It is what it is. Ruby hasn't seen it yet. She's on her way in. She's got an appointment today. So we actually ran like three and a half days. I wanted to be done last night. That broken bit really messed me up. But here we are. That said, come here. The shiny ones, I'm not sure they were worth the effort. They look better. They definitely do. But in this particular application with the light coming in behind them, unless I put a spotlight on this wall, which I've talked about doing, so it might happen. I think taking these regular 3D printed ones, the quality off the core one, is turned out beautiful. I think clear coating these with a good clear coat is gonna get as far enough into the shiny aspect with a more consistent result than the acetone smoothing. It's just hard to control to get it exactly where you want it. Doing one or two, fine. 50, I'm gonna have to like, even if I do acetone smooth all of these, I'm gonna have to do two or three a day for the next month to get this wall finished. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, that looks amazing. Holy shit, I love it. We killed it. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah. Are you happy with it? I have thoughts. You have thoughts, okay. 50 hearts on the wall is a big step for Blackthorn Tattoo. We've been making big steps for months now. The space is really coming together, but we didn't realize how much it was missing until we got this up on the wall. I mean, we did realize that the heater that was here was heinous and had to go. I didn't bother bogging down the video with the removal process of that, but I did find some excellent carpet underneath of it that I just have to share with you. 
But before now, the only art that was really up in here is this painting by our friend Doom back in Philadelphia. So adding Ruby's design and inspiration and my work to this space has really brought it to another level. And I'm really excited to see where the next steps go because we are nowhere near done with this space. Acetone smoothing is something I have done in the past, just never to this level this much. And I do have to say, it was definitely a form of chemical warfare on myself that I will be smelling acetone for a while from. It was also a failed experiment, but sometimes the only way to know if something's going to be right for you or not is to try and fail. And I'm okay with that, even though the acetone smooth tarts we used here and all the acetone I went through and all the time is all for naught. We're gonna end up clear coating these. I do believe that's where we're gonna wrap it up for this one, folks. This was a heck of a project, something I never would have tackled if it weren't for my Prusa print farm. Thank you to Prusa Research, sponsor of this video, and Mandic Labs on the whole. Their filament and their machines make projects like this possible. Also, thank you to PCBWay, manufacturers of CNC services, 3D printing services, and so many other things. Prusa Research for when you want to build it, PCBWay for when you don't. Thank you to folks for watching. Drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments, what would you have done differently in this project? Do you have a better method for acetone smoothing? Please do let me know. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you folks in the next one.